Today I want to go over some questions that have come up lately. And they basically revolve around tolerances, specifications, loose versus tight engines. And it's a good subject to go over. People end up using spec and tolerance interchangeably. And they kind of are, but they kind of aren't. And if you try to take in the whole subject at one time, it's pretty daunting and can be overwhelming. And I understand where the confusion comes from. So let's talk about it. Specification. Any mechanical device, electrical device, whatever, has a specification it's designed to meet. And parts in that item have particular specifications that they are made to, to function properly, not break, not hurt somebody, keep your clearances right to have room for lubrication and bushings and that sort of thing. And when we're looking at it from a machining side or a production side, and most of the stuff I work on would be pertaining to four-stroke gasoline burning engines, you have to look at the spec to find out what the tolerance is for a given clearance on a given part. Now, for example, a rod bearing to a crankshaft, a main bearing to a crankshaft, Typically in the one to two thousandths range, varying by manufacturer. Some of them are in the, and uh, some things are in one ten thousandths. Some things are a set dimension. Valve lash, uh, the distance between your rocker arm and the tip of your valve. But it all comes down to spec and tolerance. When we say specification, that means we go to the book for a rod bearing clearance, and I'm just going to use some oversized numbers here to make this easier to talk about. Let's say we look up a rod bearing clearance and that rod bearing clearance goes from one thousandths to five thousandths. Now in reality that one thousandths is probably pretty accurate. The five thousandths is going to be knocking like a man with a hammer in there. But it'll just make for easy numbers. So the specification says that our tolerance is one thousandths to five thousandths. So if you ask most machinists, they're going to tell you that really true spec would be dead in the middle. If you ask production line assembly mechanic machinists, engine builders, that kind of thing, they're going to tell you close to the middle. Well, here's a good way to look at it. If you're dead in the middle, which would, if you're starting at a low number, a low tolerance, minimum tolerance of one thousandths, and a high tolerance or maximum tolerance of five thousandths, and that's where the terms loose and tight come from. If you got a loose engine, all your clearances are wide. They're at maximum. If you have a tight engine, all your clearances are at minimum. Now, where that comes in at. If you're aiming for the middle, you would be one, two, three thousandths. So that clearance, three thousandths, would be considered dead on spec with an allowance for being slightly small or slightly big. But you want a machine dead on if you can, whatever it is you're doing. So, how does this apply to an engine? When you get a brand new car, brand new engine, you start driving it, it starts to wear. You do all your maintenance, you change your oil regularly, you keep good feelings, it's wearing. So what it's doing is it's going from whatever tolerance it started out at it's heading to the maximum clearance or the loose side. And usually when you hear a rod start to knock or a car starts to smoke, the rod bearings past that 5,000 mark, whatever the case may be for that particular engine, or the bore has worn and oil's getting by the rings and getting up into the combustion chamber and it's starting to burn and smoke. You're on the wore out side of things or the loose out of tolerance you've gone past the five thousandths now on the other hand if you got a brand new car and the minute you start it up it gets to making a squealing noise whatever and all of a sudden it has no oil pressure and they go in and they tell you one of the barons was not clearanced right from the factory then you were on this side you were to the over tight side of the minimum clearance and that baron didn't get proper lubrication and it burn it up all right now, how does this play into how we do our engines? If you're building an all-out racing engine, you're going to have to decide, is it going for longevity or is it going for maximum power? 
for my viewers that have been watching NASCAR for a long time, they used to have what was called a qualifying engine. They'd put that engine in, they'd go out and qualify, and bring the car back in and change the engine. But when they came back out to race, because they had this other motor in, the car wasn't quite as fast at the beginning of the race. But by the end of the race, it was getting pretty close to what that qualifying engine had done in qualifying. Well, what they had done, they had built the qualifying engine very loose. It didn't have to run very long. It just had to go out and make, say, five laps and three at speed to qualify. They brought it back in and changed the engine. They had built it loose. It's on the high side of the tolerances, up around that 5,000th mark. Why did they do this? Because that engine could use more of its generated power to propel the car and less of its generated power to get its own parts moving inside, i.e. less friction, less drag, more power went to the wheels. That's why they did the rules saying that if you changed your engine, you had to go to the back of the field. Because a lot of people were building really loose, barely legal qualifying engines to start in a better place in the field. Now, let's look at that from a drag strip standpoint. Some of you have asked me how come they come to the track or any other track and they see these cars running or these really fast cars and they stop at the end of the track and they have to wait to be towed back. Well, they've gone for every last drop of power they can get out of that engine. So it's loose, which means it's only going to run so long. It's kind of like you can look at it, and don't take this in the literal sense, but in the theoretical sense. The motor's almost wore out the first time they race it, so that it spins real freely and it's loosed up as much power and reduced as much friction as you can. But you're going to have to go into it quicker. So those cars aren't broke. They're just trying not to use up the limited amount of RPM or revolutions times that crankshaft can go around before they have to go back into that engine. Now, a tight motor. Bracket cars. People build a bracket car and run that engine for seasons on end and do minimal maintenance to it. They change their oil, they change the plugs, they fiddle with the carburetor, keep it timed good, but they don't have to go into it. Now, some of them are built middle of the clearance around a 3000 mark slightly loose or slightly tight some are built completely tight the goal there is the motor will wear in over a longer period of time because it's going to have to be driven out to the lanes raced and driven back to the trailer it's going to get treated more like a street car than a race car from how it's handled standpoint it's not a full out heads up car it's not a full out top fuel car it's not a full out qualifying stock car it's got to have longevity because you got to go out there week after week after week running your point series or even if you're not running points money race after money race after money race and you don't want to have to mess with it you want to just be able to jump in the trailer on friday night jump in the truck with the trailer hooked up go to the track fire the car up and race it all weekend come back and then like every three weekends change your oil unless you're running alcohol and then whatever you notice your oil is getting milky you change it but that's where tight and loose comes in at. If somebody just brings me their standard engine, like for their work truck or their muscle car, and they're like, hey, you know, I need to get this redone, I'm going to build it either middle or slightly tight because it needs to run for a long time. It needs to be able to go a couple hundred thousand miles. We're not going for every last drop of power. We're going for reliability. We're going for durability. That's good examples of the tighter middle of the road to the tight side. Now, when you hear somebody go, it's got a loose engine in it, you now know that it's built to the loose side of the tolerance, or it's got a tight motor in it, and it's built to the tight side of the tolerance. Hope that sheds some light on it. If you talk to different engine builders, they've all got their own opinion on which is better. They've all got their own opinion on how to arrive at it but it boils down to the same thing. Spec gives us our tolerance. How we apply that tolerance is how we look at the usefulness and the purpose of the engine we're building. So I hope that helps shed some light on it. If you found it entertaining, interesting, or interesting, please subscribe, comment, or share. As always, practice your skills, learn a new one. Either way, turn that skill into craftsmanship or those skills into craftsmanship. You never know how far they'll take you or where you'll be able to apply them to. 
So until next time, thanks for watching. Have a great day. This has been Fab Race Mod Repeat. We'll see you next time.